So what we're going to talk about in this little session is how to write a good nomination, what makes it stand out, some tips and tricks to keep things within the word limit, which can be one of the big challenges of these kind of um, applications, uh, some tips on how to prepare yourself for writing an application and then what to do afterwards to make sure that it's not too tedious or stressful of an application process, uh, and some tips on how to really nail the questions. So how to break down a question and get the best possible answer. So before I even go on, I want to know what sort of things people are applying for and who I'm talking to, because it'll make my life a heap easier. Here's a show of hands. Is anyone here applying for an individual award? Two people? Three people? Four people. Sweet. On the behalf. On the behalf of someone else? Yeah? Yep. Great. Um, who's, or who's applying on behalf of somebody else for an individual award? Great. Excellent. Who's applying for on behalf of a business? Cool. On behalf of a training organisation? What have I missed in all these categories? <laughs> Who else is here for a reason that I haven't said? Who's here because they just wanted to hang out and potentially enjoy the catering? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate honesty. That makes me happy. That's great. Um, cool. That gives me a good sense of what's going on. So I'm Amy, a uh, local business owner and comedian, so there will be moments in this where I might be testing out some new comedy gear, so feel free to humour me. That would be great. Um, but the general thing with this slide is just to make sure that you're aware that I can totally handle any feedback or interruptions or comments. I've got enough ego to handle it. So if anyone wants to put their hand up and add something that I might have missed, please do. It helps everyone here and also all the people that are watching at home. Hey. Great. This isn't awkward at all. Great. So I've got a bit of a sense of who's here. I also want to know who's applied for one of these before? Show of hands who's done it before. Great. Who's never applied for an NT training award before? Excellent. Uh, who's never applied for an award ever before? Cool. That's great. It gives me a really good sense about where everyone's at. A lot of people here have done these sort of things before. So some of the information in here may sound familiar or you may know it, but um, take it in because it might be articulated in a different way that is useful or helpful for you. Cool. Step one for any of these awards, and this isn't just awards, this is also if you apply for a scholarship, applying for jobs, anything where you need to put together a written application for something, all of the things in this workshop should be helpful in some way. Um, and also don't worry about writing everything down, I'll make the presentation available for everybody. I'd rather you absorb it rather than trying to catch up with written words. So. Um, I'll talk to the training humans and they'll send it out to everybody. Great. So how I would start something like this first, check you're eligible, don't waste any time. We're all very busy people in the Territory. Everyone here wears more than four hats, I'm imagining. Yes. So making sure that your time is used well. So the first thing I'd do is check eligibility and that for me would involve contacting anti-training awards and having a chat to them. Um, just double checking before you even spend any time on it that it's the right thing for you or the right category for you. The other reason why contacting them is a good idea is probably more of a PR side of things. Your name is going to get remembered as somebody who is applying. So that means when they're doing the judging, your name is already in this space, which kind of helps sometimes, yeah? Like if you're looking at 100 applications, if you go, oh, this person contacted me, we had a great chat, you're already sitting in a better spot. Never hurts to get on the phone and talk to somebody or to send a nice email to start that process off in your application. I don't work for the Department of Trade, Business and Innovation, so this is just what I do as a, as a sole trader or somebody applying. Um, you guys are going to get so many phone calls and emails. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, make sure others are there to support. So this might be if you're applying on behalf of somebody else, make sure that that person or organisation or business has some people around them making them feel good because the better mood they're going to be in, the better the application's going to be. So I've done some applications on behalf of CDU and what we did is we sort of sat around together as a group and talked about how good the difference they're making with their training is so that everyone was really enthusiastic about providing information. So do something that builds up people's self-esteem first before even tackling the questions. And if you're an individual here who's applying um, for an application, make sure that you've got somebody that you adore checking in on you and keeping you accountable. Um, for me, that's my husband. He's pretty good on dates. He's an engineer. He's very, there's a structure. As somebody with an arts degree, not so much structure. So I need him to make sure that I keep on track with my dates and things like that. So find that person who's going to support you. Um, make a timeline with deadlines. And what I'd be doing here is I'd have a calendar out and I'd be looking, that's when the application's due. 
Two weeks before then, I'm going to have my second draft done. Three weeks before that, I'm going to have my first draft done. Plot those timelines in so that you've got something to work towards. Um, and also means it won't sneak up on you. Uh, I know some people here who have been finalists or even won awards applied the night of, but uh, despite the fact that they did very well, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Give yourself timelines, work towards those deadlines. And also copy all the questions into a Word document. Work on a Word document. Um, the portal's great, it works, but just in case the internet dies in Darwin, which happens, uh, save everything in a Word document. Make sure that you have copies of everything. Back it all up so in case you have one of those great moments of flow, when you've written a bunch of answers and you're feeling really good about yourself, you've got copies of it all, yeah? Um, so build yourself up before you even apply. Spend some time on self-esteem. Um, the better you feel about yourself beforehand, the more confident your application is going to sound. So some things that I do to help with that is I try to detach myself, and this is in the case of an individual application, I try to detach myself from it and talk about myself as if I was a friend. Because we tend to say nicer things about our friends and ourselves, I find. So doing some activities where I go, all right, this is Amy, this is what she's good at. Or even getting some mates or some people I work with to do that for me. Just to kind of remove that sense of boasting which can sometimes sit within an individual application. Although I would like to point out that if you're applying for an award, don't feel as if you're showboating or boasting. It's a very Aussie thing to kind of go, you get a compliment and you go, oh, no, nah, you know, whatever, it's nothing. Have a moment to feel proud because all of you are doing great things or all of the people that you're writing applications for are doing great things. And I think it's important that we take a moment to really feel proud about that without the shame that sometimes pride can have. So give yourself permission first to feel proud. Um, get some people to say nice things about you. Do something that motivates it. If it's a group application, do something silly and fun as a group before you even start breaking down those questions. Because the more creative, comfortable and happy brains are, the more quicker and resilient they are at coming up with answers. So if you do something fun beforehand, you get a hit of dopamine in your brain, which then means that as you're writing your answers, your answers are going to be quicker, sharper, easier to find connections. Um, that might be chocolate. Whatever it is that boosts you beforehand, do that. Um, also, it's not immodest to seek recognition for your work. I think that's fine. I spend a lot of my time working with people telling them that they deserve to be recognised for the work that they do. Give yourself that permission. One of the things I do before I even start any of the questions is do a bit of a stock take on the skills or the achievements before anything starts. So get a piece of paper out and have a bit of a brain dump. So if you're doing an individual application, look at all of the things you've learned or all the skills you've developed or the things that you've achieved while you've been doing that training. So don't even worry about the questions yet. This is just to get a stock take together, yeah? So get a nice piece of paper out, get your favourite pen out and make a list. Just brain dump all of that down. If you're doing something for a business or an organisation or a training group, this is a chance to just write down all of the outcomes that you can think of without worrying about the structure of a question. Because if you've done that brain dump, when it comes to doing the question, you've got a resource to pull from. It'll make it a lot easier for you, yeah? Um, and then I'd, I'd be asking some other people their opinions on that too. So even if it's, so you've got five people involved in the training group or in the uh, course, get them a piece of paper each, five minutes to write down everything that's been a positive outcome or anything that's worked in that program to get that content before you start writing. Because it means that when you start doing the answer, you can get into a sense of flow and you're not going to have something like, oh, what was that thing again? And then have to go and stop and research it. You want to be able to give yourself space just to write. So having these things researched beforehand makes a huge difference. The other one is a timeline. So this is what I'd do before I was applying. I'd go, all right, what has been the timeline or the chrono chronological story of this training? So then if you are doing your answers, you've got that to refer back to. So it might be 2015 um, was inspired to start by something, 2016 did the first course into it, 2017, all of those things, put in those key dates. Because if you've got a timeline, it becomes a really useful resource for your answers. And it could also be a really nice attachment in that attachment area. If you've got a timeline of how, how things have progressed. So a great way to demonstrate to the judges how far you've come or what are the key significant moments of change in that journey? Especially for an individual application, I think it paints a really nice picture. Um, great. 
The other thing I do is I'd make my own marking guide or checklist, yeah? So all of the judges basically, I'm not sure how it works because I haven't done this panel before, but they'll get all the applications and they'll have a selection criteria that they mark it against. I'd be creating my own one of them as I'm applying. So it'd be like, all right, what are they asking me? They're asking me to demonstrate that I'd be a great ambassador. So I'd have that as a checkbox. And then once I've done my first draft, I'd read through it and I'd give myself a score out of 10 for how well that was demonstrated. And then be like, all right, cool, that needs to be bumped up a bit. How can I add some more info on that? So dissect what they're asking for. Put together your own marking checklist and use that as a way to test how strong your drafts are. And then get somebody from outside of the organisation or outside of your own journey to do the same thing. Sometimes that third pair of eyes are the ones that will read something and go, I don't know if you really proved that or I've got questions about this. And if they've got questions, the judges will have questions and you want to make sure that's answered. The, the best applications in any of these awards are ones where somebody reads it and they go, I have zero doubt in my mind that this person has done this or achieved these things. Take away any doubt because the moment a judge goes, oh, I've got some doubt about this, if there's 100 applications and there's three that are really close, if yours is the one that causes a tiny bit of doubt, it's the one that gets pushed to the side. Make sure there's no questions when you're reading those answers. Um, yeah, and use it as a checklist to keep yourself accountable. It really helps. Um, talk to people. Uh, saying things out loud and in different voices and in different ways of articulating is a great way to find out more about um, your program or about your business or about your own story. So I'd sit down and conduct some interviews. So for those CDU courses that I helped with the application, I went and met all of the people that were involved in delivering those courses and asked them a series of questions to get their point of view and was able to gather the right language to talk about those courses, yeah? So conduct those interviews. If you're an individual applying, talk to the people that have done your training or the people that employ you. Just buy somebody a coffee and a cake. Everyone likes coffee and cake, right? Unless they're not on caffeine and then green tea is also a good time, right? Buy them something, sit down, have a yarn, gather some of that language back because you might not think about it that way. Or they might have an insight into something that you've learned or that they've delivered that you haven't thought about before. The more voices involved, the stronger the application. Um, this is an important one, for, especially for people doing individual applications. Like thoughts tend to be pretty self-fulfilling, yeah? So if you're approaching an application like, I don't think I'll be very good at this, or I don't actually think I'm that great, or I feel really lame for doing this, then you're not gonna have a positive experience doing that application. Really check in about where your thoughts are before you start the application, yeah? So it should be, I'm really excited to do this application and show these wonderful people in the government how great I'm doing, yeah? Bring out the challenge and the competitiveness of it, yeah? Because what that'll do is it'll make you more excited to do the application. And if you're more energetic and more excited, it comes through in the way that you write the answers. So think about that self-talk beforehand and get yourself into a space of, this is a great opportunity to prove what I'm doing, or I deserve this. That kind of language makes a big difference to how you'll approach that application. Step two is to know the brand or the story, yeah? To really know it so that there's no, there, there's no pulling and hoping and trying to gather something together. Like there's no question in your mind that it's a deserving thing. So knowing it inside and out. So the way to do that is to have a strong brand or an elevator pitch if you're an individual. What is the brand of this application, yeah? What is it valuing? What is the reputation that it's showing? Why does it deserve the award? Knowing those questions will make your application stronger, yeah? What's the, what's the strengths of it, especially as an individual? Why are you different to anyone else? That's something you need to prove in these applications. What makes you different? And everyone has an answer to this. I often do these things and people are like, I'm just the same as anyone else doing this course. There is something that sets you apart, whether that's how you applied or why you applied or the story or the journey of how you got there. Focus on those individual characteristics and that brand and it'll make a huge difference to how authentic your application is going to look, yeah? Um, what we're going to do now is, a, is an activity because I feel like sometimes we sit stu still for an hour a day and actually sitting's not really good for you. So <laughs> I'm going to make you all stand up and what I want you to do is just pair up. 
<laughs> yeah? I want every, <laughs> there's like a random voice going on in the background. This is great. Um, have we got even numbers of humans here? Is there one, two, three, four, five? <laughs> anyway, stand up, find a pair. That's what I just need everyone to do and I'm going to give you guys a, a task. Yeah? There's no passive sitting in my workshops. That's not how I roll. Has everyone, everyone got a pair? <laughs> Yep. Has everyone, everyone's got a pair? Yeah, I was a runner last year. Alright. Who doesn't have a pair? Please put your hand up if you're not paired. Great. Alright, my wonderful, delightful humans on a Tuesday. Is. Do you want me to wait for this or. Okay, cool. All right, so what we're going to do is my favourite question to ask when I'm doing applications or writing scholarships or doing anything is why. The question why is so valuable because it tells you more than what somebody just did. It gives you the motivation underlying that action, which is what judges are looking for. They want to know the why of how things have happened and how they've gotten to where they are and why. It's a really important, valuable question. So, for example, if the question is demonstrate a time that you've shown leadership in your workplace, you might say, I showed leadership by buying a stapler two weeks before the staples ran out. I don't know. I don't work in an office, guys. I'm sorry. I've got no idea how it works, right? But you might say something like that. And then after you've said that sentence, you want to ask why? Because showing that initiative made sure that the company worked more efficiently and saved time for everybody else. Why? Because I care about my workplace and I want to be the best employee ever. See how it goes from being I bought a stapler to being a good human being and it demonstrates that? What we're going to do is I'd like you to talk to your new friend about what you're applying for, whether that's you as an individual or your, whoever you're, like the training award or the business. Have a, have a chat. And what I want is one person is going to do the talking and one person is going to be a three-year-old and at any point can say why. You can say why at any point, because a three-year-old, that's how they exist, right? It's why, 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 yeah? So be a three-year-old, ask why, and let that person uncover more about their story. <laughs> so I'm going to give you two minutes to talk and two minutes to be a why person, and then we're going to switch over, okay? Your time starts now. <laughs> and stop! Stop! Did I get everybody? All right, grab, grab your seats, everybody. Grab your seats, everybody. <laughs> Two minutes goes fast when you're talking about things that you care about. It's a song. Um, great, thank you. Um, so that why activity, why is so good, yeah? So if you're writing a sentence, ask why at the end of it. If you're coming up with an idea, ask why at the end of it. It just gives the little kicks at the end of your application that are going to be the thing that makes it stand out. Because sometimes when you're reading lots of applications, it gets a bit sterile and a bit stale. Asking why goes, all right, here's this thing and here's why it's important. Or here's why this person is a good ambassador. Here's why this training organisation is making an impact. Ask why at the end of every question. If, you, if you've got the time, ask why at the ever, end of every sentence. Um, that's actually just good writing technique anyway. Like that's from the world of journalism. Like you write a sentence, you have to kind of explain why that is important or how that's important or who it relates to. Always think about the purpose of those sentences, but just asking why at the end is great. And that's a good activity. Hands up again who's doing applications on behalf of businesses or training groups. Cool. Yeah. So I'd get a group of the people that are involved in that training group or business together and do that why activity. Yeah. And then get them to write down answers to a few questions because that's the best way to get them to trigger into the purpose which is inevitably what is the point of these awards. It's not so much about, you know, everything you've done. You want to make sure that there's something there that the judges can cling on to for the humanising aspect of your application. Because in the end, there's a bunch of people from this that'll be ambassadors for training in the Territory. And the more you can articulate your purpose and your why, the better an ambassador will be. So that's a really important factor in this. Because it's not just about an award and some cash dollar. It's about the end story of that person and how they're going to help promote training in the territory. So why is this such a beautiful thing to bring into things? Um, plus it's good because communicating with people helps your brain feel more motivated. 
So like sometimes you'll be sitting there in front of a computer and you just lose that excitement about what you're applying for. Talking face to face with another person who's passionate about it is the quickest way to get that energy back about what you're applying for. So here's some things um, that the judging panels are looking for. Um, and this is for individual, first off. So looking for evidence of how your training has contributed to your career and study plans, to the development of your skills and your achievements to date, as well as any ways in which your training may have helped to engage with the community. So when I see a question or selection criteria like this, I break it down, yeah? And this goes the same for all of the different groups' applications. See what it's asking and then break it down into criteria, yeah? So they're looking for evidence. Yeah, that in itself is its own selection criteria. They want evidence of it. You can't just say it, there needs to be something that backs it up. So how are you showing that evidence? You've only got five attachments on this application. So you wanna make sure those five attachments are super relevant, say a lot about what you're doing and are clear, yeah? But I'd be thinking evidence, if I make a statement, like we helped we helped a bunch, like we made a difference in terms of uh, employability of young people in the territory. You then need to back that up with evidence. Five people who've gone through our program have gone on to employment, right? So every statement needs evidence to back it up. Yeah. Um, how has your training contributed to your career and study plans? Here, that's a question that's saying, how have you changed? What's the change that has happened through this training? Where were you beforehand? Where are you now? Demonstrate that, yeah? How has this training developed that career or developed that training or developed you? From here to there, what's that story? Um, again, development of your skills and achievements. What are the skills and achievements? Unfortunately, the panel aren't gonna know everyone personally, although being from the Northern Territory, we probably do. <laughs> like, but we're not gonna know everything about everybody, right? So what are those skills and achievements? Never presume people know always have it outlined in there. Um, and which ways your training may have helped to engage with the community? They want the bigger picture. It's not just about you, it's about the community, yeah? So especially individuals and even for the groups, how has that training or that experience or that business application or that business training impacted the community? Not just the individuals involved, what's that bigger story, yeah? Has it helped you um, inspire others? To find each category winner, judges will also be made on future potential as ambassadors for the Northern Territory and at the Australian Training Awards to represent the success that is possible through the vocation, education and training sector in the Northern Territory. This is for everyone, right? Organisations that are applying for this, training groups that are applying for this, individuals that are applying for this. There's a role of ambassadorship. Is that or even a word? Ambassadorship? ambassadorialness, Amb you be an ambassador, right? They wanna know that who they're picking is gonna be a great reflection of study and vocational training in the territory. So how do you demonstrate that in your application? You know, Think about what makes a good ambassador. How can you show that you are that or that your business is that, yeah? I'd be, you know, when are applications due again? When are they? 26th of May. 26th of May. You've got a month to maybe even start working on this, yeah? You've got a month to start developing it, yep. So if it's an organisation that would win the training award, um, would it be a representative from that organisation? That's a question for you guys at the back. If, an org if a business applies, is it a representative for the business that becomes an ambassador or are ambassadors just the individuals? It's actually the business. Business, so yep. <clears throat> the business as a whole, but usually we'll have someone who'll speak to it. So if I do that on behalf of NEC. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. uh, making my life easy. Um, for those of you at home that might not have heard that because the microphone's here, hey, uh, the question was, if it's a business applying, um, is there an individual that becomes the ambassador? Uh, the answer is, uh, in some ways, yes, but it's about the business being an ambassador for training in the territory with one person potentially being the spokesperson. Great question, thank you. So start working on that now. You've got a month to start putting in some things potentially for this application that are gonna develop that ambassadorship, you know? How are you involving the community in this training? How are you promoting training as a really good thing, yeah? Start thinking about that. Um, and the future potential as an ambassador. That doesn't mean that you're already excellent at it. It's about that potential. Don't freak out that you're not necessarily the greatest public speaker 
or you've done anything like this before. It's about potential. Potential is demonstrated in enthusiasm and passion. A good ambassador is passionate about what they're talking about. Let that come across in the application. Cool, answering the questions. Step three, right? How to make an application stand out? You wanna make sure that it's the big picture. It's not just about you, it's a bigger picture. So how is your training impacting your industry or your long-term goals to make an impact in your industry? Yeah, especially organizations or businesses that are applying. How is this changing the industry? What's the bigger picture here? Especially the bigger picture for the territory. Are there some outcomes of these programs that are gonna make a beautiful, positive change in the territory? Um, things that you might seem and feel like are everyday could actually be quite relevant to your application. So was there something that inspired you to get into that industry? That might not seem like anything to you, but for the judges, that's a really great thing to understand you more. Is there something in your life that might have made studying difficult? You might take that as just your life, but it could tell a good story to the judges about how you've overcome that adversity and have been very committed to that training process. Keep it clear and concise. Um, you don't have to use big fancy words. Uh, my, my general rule for these kind of applications is if like a year eight student can understand it or a year seven student can understand it, that's the level you wanna be writing at. You don't have to make it sound fancy or embellished. The more clear and concise an answer is, the more you're gonna be able to fit into your answers with those word counts and the more confident you seem in your answer. The more adjectives you kind of read and descriptive ways to say things, it kind of looks like you're filling as opposed to really knowing the core of what you're delivering. Um, keep to the word limit. Uh, dot points can really help for that. Like answering a dot points is absolutely fine. It's probably a nice clear way to make sure that those answers are there. Um, have great support material. Like I said, there's only five elements of support material that you can attach. Make sure it's the best five, yeah? Um, have a punchy start. You know that first part where it's like you've got 300 words to describe the overall thing and it says, some of you might not have seen the applications yet, but there's 300 words to describe yourself or your business or, your, or the course. And it says it's not used in the judging application, but it's used for the promotion. Even though it's not used in judging, I'd spend a good time getting those 300 words nice and punchy and sharp because it's the first thing anyone's gonna read about you. Always make sure that the first thing that people are seeing is some of the best. It's the same as anything, like a, a job application, you put your most relevant things at the top. Always have a punchy start. Um, and answer the question. Seems kind of self-explanatory. But sometimes you see a question and you go, oh, I've got so many things I wanna say and I've only got 400 words. And you get caught up on all of the different things that you want to say without actually answering the question. Sometimes it's important, but if it doesn't, achieve what's being asked of you, it's okay to let it go, yeah? You can't include everything in this. So make sure it's the most valuable, the most relevant to the question um, and answers what it's actually asking. Um, go for quality, not quantity, and be personal and specific. Um, I definitely tell your own story in there. The more people get to understand you in these judging applications, the more they're gonna trust you as an ambassador. Uh, look for opportunities to inject the key words and the question into your answer. So if it says something like um, displays innovation in the delivery of the course, the word innovation needs to be in your answer, yeah? Use that language back at the questions. It's kind of like a game, you know, like it's kind of like there's a challenge and you kind of send it back at them and you're like, yeah, that's right, have your language back at you. Think about it like tennis. I, I get really competitive with dumb things like applications. Like it's not, it's me versus a piece of paper. But if I turn it into a game, I really enjoy the process. It might work for some of you. It might sound a bit insane. Whatever works for you. <laughs> that just helps me. Uh, don't overcomplicate it with big sentences and big words. And use metrics, facts and figures. If you've got some stats that back up what you're saying, it looks better. And it shows that you've done your research. So if it's, we, we helped a bunch of students get into full-time work, it's how many of those students have gotten into full-time work? What's that percentage? What's that breakdown? Give them the stats. Because if you're doing the right thing, those stats are gonna be impressive, yeah? Don't be afraid of numbers. So it's the arts, art student. Don't be afraid of numbers. Um, have passion and personality. Like, be a breath of fresh air in your application. 
Because you imagine you're reading hundreds and hundreds of applications for these awards. You want to make sure that there's something you remember. So you can have personality in the way you answer those questions. It doesn't have to be like cheeky or funny the whole way through it, but make sure that it reads more like you. If you're reading it and you go, this feels very sterile and not like me, maybe inject a bit more humanness into it. Because if I'm reading application after application, human beings connect to human things. So I think it's important to make sure there is a bit of you in there. Um, and own it. Don't um, talk anything down. Don't be like, I fell into this and then I took, like I, I, I made the most of what I was given and I'm, you know, I've done okay. It's, I chose to do this, I achieved these things and I'm proud of it because. Sentences that show that you're, you know what you're talking about. Don't pat it out or like make it soft. Hard sentences that are like, I did this, I'm proud of this, these are the outcomes, really clear. It'll make the judges have no doubt whatsoever that you are deserving and that you know what you're talking about. Um, said that one. Word count. Okay, this is tricky, right? Because some of your questions are like 400 word limit for your answer. And you'll be like, how do I fit all of my life into 400 words, <laughs> right? So my trick is to meet that um, deadline, like that word count. Don't go too short. 15% less is probably the least amount, but I think you'll have no problem filling that word count. Don't go over because it doesn't get included in the judging. So be strict about your word count. If you do it in Word document, you get to have that tally so you can see where you're going. What I'd be doing is I'd print it out once I've done my first rough draft, print it out, get three highlighters, one of them yellow for gold. That's the stuff that is never getting removed from this answer because it is gold, it tells the story. Green texture is, it's a goer, it's okay. It'll, it'll, it'll go all right. Red is probably a bit superfluous. Hasn't added anything that's made this answer strong. And then be ruthless with your editing to keep it to that word limit. You'll also find that there's a lot of superfluous words when you're writing, like the word that. The word that never really adds anything to a sentence. Um, for example, I'd like to prove that that is a superfluous answer. That doesn't make sense. I'd like to prove that dogs are the best. Um, I'd like to prove dogs are the best. Same sentence, took a word out. There's lots of words that we use that we don't actually need. Get rid of them to keep that word count down. So let's have a look at some questions and sort of break it down a little bit for you, right? So this is for humans doing the individual <laughs> application. So the question is, so it's about career and study achievements. So why did you choose your course? How has it changed or impacted on you? What have you gained from it? And have you had to address any challenges that have impacted on your training? 400 words, it's not many words, really. So I would approach this by taking these questions and using them as headers for dot points so that I can be straight to the point, straight into it. You don't have to write the question out again. Get straight into it. So it's, why did you choose your course? I chose this course because dot point, bam, dot point, bam, dot point, bam. Quickest way to get there and keep those word count down, yeah? You don't, I find if you write paragraphs and sentences, it tends to use more words than you might have for that space. So jump straight into it. Um, and what I would do is the first time I'd approach this question is I'd write everything in my brain and then walk away from it for a day and then come back and start editing and refining and then walk away for a day and then come back and do some more editing and refining. Again, I'm gonna go through to a few more questions that are for more businesses and stuff. This is a good one though. This is for an individual, community engagement. How are you connected with your community, extended family? How has the training impacted on your community? What qualities do you have or activities have you been involved in that you feel would be useful for your role and your achievements in areas other than study and work? This question is the judges trying to work out how valuable of an ambassador you'll be. So what groups are you already involved in? What people are you connected to? How are you already acting as an ambassador for what you do? This is their test to see if we pick you as an ambassador because you're the most qualified, what do we then get out of it? Or how are you already in that space? Take it as a challenge, yeah? How are you connected with the community and extended family? Give them an answer that shows that you know that you're thinking about being an ambassador because that's what's going to make your application stand out. Um, all right, so excellence and in initiatives. This is for um, people who are doing, who's applying on behalf of a training course? Is anyone here applying on behalf of a training course at all? No, maybe? So again, what I would do is I'd take this question 
Um, so they want to know about student engagement, including innovation, me innovative methods to, of communication and validation, successful student learning outcomes. I take these questions, put them on a bit of butcher's paper in a room, do that why activity with a bunch of people that are involved in delivering that course, and then get them to walk around the room and write answers to these questions. Um, several reasons why this is good. The why activity will make their brain start to dissect that process and what the value of those courses have been in the training. And walking and writing actually stimulates a part of your brain that stops it. You know when you are talking about something or writing something and this voice in your brain goes, that's a bit lame, it's a bit stupid, what are you doing that for? You know that voice that kind of stops you from being creative? If you're walking, that part of your voice doesn't speak. It's distracted, yeah? So walking and writing, butcher's paper up, actually helps create a space for more creative and resilient writing. Um, again, okay, this is one for, again, for the training groups. Links with industry and community. How are active links with industry and the community implemented in practice? I'd be, this is a really great opportunity to show all the different organisations that you're involved in. And this would be really well demonstrated in a support letter from one of those industries. So if you say that you've got a big connection with the fishing industry, I'd be getting the fishing board or whatever it is that does all that kind of thing to do the support letter to go with it. You want to demonstrate these things as much as you want to talk about them. <laughs> okay, here's one for businesses. Achievements of the business and its employees that can be attributed to training. 800 words, so how training has improved the productivity and well-being, how training has improved your relationships, how training has improved the productivity and profitability of your business, uh, how you measure the benefits of training, how training will improve your business in the future. This is such a great opportunity to go, here's some case studies or here's some examples. Yeah, it's all well and good saying, training has improved our relationships with clients by making us better at communicating. Cool, give us an example, prove it. Yeah, every time you say something in this question, you need to think about how you're gonna prove it to the judges. Because if they're reading the same language the whole way through an application, nothing about your application will stand out. Solid, concrete examples are the thing that will make it stand out. Um, how training will improve your business in the future. You, think about that. Do some research into your industry or your space. Yeah, um, These applications, although they are time consuming, they're never a waste of time. Because by doing these kind of questions, you're actually doing a bit of business planning at the same time. And you're also developing content that could be used as um, information on websites. It's a great way to get your marketing and your language about your business really tight and concise and relevant. Nothing is ever wasted by doing these things. And remember, ask why after you answer the question. Always back that up. The support material, I'd get some support letters. I mean, you've only got five attachments, so make sure if you're getting a support letter, it's relevant. I was saying last night, it's all well and good that your mate Bob thinks that you're doing a really great job, but I don't know if Bob's, who knows who Bob is. Make sure that if you're getting a support letter, it's from somebody who has a voice or a level of authority in your industry or in your space. They need to have their letterhead and their signature and their details and contact details on that support letter. And my trick, get onto support letters early. The day before isn't gonna get you a good support letter. Give them time and check in on them, yeah? Sometimes people get busy. Double check that they're onto it. Other support material um, that I find is great, news and media coverage shows that you're making an impact greater than your own. Like you could even put like a clippings PDF together, that can help. Um, the timeline can be useful. Anyone here have any support material that they found was useful for them in their applications? You had support letters, didn't you? Yeah, I had a lot of references. Yep. I pretty much only use references in my support material and my qualifications. Great, what did you? Yep. <laughs> yeah, great. So things that show from other organisations that you're relevant and doing the right thing, yeah? Support material is a chance for you to be like, like your wingman to come in and say something nice about you when you're trying to pick up. Like you're saying all these great things about yourself and then a mate comes along and they're like, yep. Mm. Videos are a great way to articulate more information about yourself. 
get somebody to put a little video together that outlines some of the stories of the people in your organisation. That's endlessly useful. Plus videos are easier to watch than reading lots of applications. So let me think about there. Double check everything, yeah? If you have a question about your application or you're not sure, ask the anti-training awards team. That's what they're there for, use them, ask questions. There's no such thing as a silly question. I find that the thing that you don't ask is probably the dumbest thing you'll end up doing, yeah? Always ask, it doesn't hurt. And again, remember, it puts your name in their list of people that are applying. So you're more likely to be remembered when the judging process comes around. It's a little sneaky way to be remembered. Um, oh, and always thank them. Sorry, I'm gonna give away my tips. I always send a thank you email for the opportunity to apply. Sounds a bit like sucking up, but they'll remember me, won't they, right? Do that. You're gonna get lots of thank you emails now. You're welcome. Um, proofread, make sure there's no spelling errors or mistakes. Get a third pair of eyes. Get lots of people to look over it. Um, if, if you're reading it or if somebody who doesn't know your story is reading it and they have a question, that means that you're missing something in that answer. So if they're reading it and they go, oh, but how did that happen or why did that happen? That's a sign that you need to add a little bit more content there. So get some people to read it and question what you're doing. That's the best way to make sure there's no mistakes there. And that's why doing it in a Word document's better because Word processor will pick up your spelling and grammar mistakes rather than straight into the application. And then finally, reward yourself. Yeah, when you finish an application like this, it's really important to reward yourself because then you get another hit of dopamine, which is a good time, but also it means that any time you have to do this in the future, your brain will associate it with the reward, yeah? So you will go, oh, I felt really good for doing that application because there was a reward afterwards. I look forward to this next time. Doing something like this where you're reflecting on your achievements, whether it's a business individual training organisation, should be a positive experience should be a nice opportunity to go, yeah, I'm doing a really great thing, I'm really proud of myself. Shouldn't be stressful, shouldn't be arduous. It should be a really beautiful opportunity to go, I'm doing okay and I'm proud. Make sure that it is that for the people that are putting it together. Because the more it feels like that, the stronger your application will be because it's positive and optimistic, but also you'll look forward to the next opportunity. And it's important to remember that like, even if you don't win, it's still a good thing to do. All of these processes, every job you ever apply for that you didn't get, was some, there was something you learnt from that or something you tightened in your resume or something you learnt about yourself when you were doing the interview, yeah? It's never a waste of time, it's always self-development, which is kind of what life's about, I think. Improving yourself and improving your community is kind of how I kind of operate. So I feel like nothing's ever wasted if you're learning something about yourself. My final tips. Make copies of everything you send. Just after I said, don't stress about it. Always copy things, uh, just in case. It's important. Apply on time, or better yet, early. Um, apart from, you, you applied <coughs> the night before. Uh, yeah, I submitted mine five minutes before the deadline. I was walking out of the office, and I wasn't sending an email. Great. No. <laughs> Did you apply early? A week. A week before? That's great. Early? Day. What was that? The day. The day, okay. Ignore those two. Right. <laughs> Definitely apply early. Give yourself space. Give yourself time to proofread. Like, don't stress. Like, don't make it... Because also, May is like dry season starts. You're going to have less and less time the further we get closer to June. So start, like, today. Woohoo. Um, make sure that you enjoy it. Make sure you take your time on it. And be kind to yourself. Like, don't... Don't expect the world. Like, you don't have to be perfect in your application. You don't have to have this amazing thing that's just going to be instantly awesome. Be kind, you know? The nicer you are to yourself when you're writing the application, the better your content's going to be, yeah? Don't put too much pressure on yourself, which is where having a lot of time to do it is the best. That's the end of the presentation. Are there questions from wonderful humans here? I, I encourage anyone who wants to... Um, I'm happy to be a third pair of eyes for things, maybe not like every part of your application, but if you've got a section that you're like, I need somebody to look at this, take down my details and please feel free to send me an email or a Facebook message and be like, can you just read this? And if you have a question, let me know so I know where the weakness of the sentence is. I'm happy to help. Um, I believe I'm gonna be involved with the Ambassador Weekend anyway, so if you all win, it'd be good to like know everybody again, so that's kind of cool. Um, and also, I, I just like finding out what people are doing in the Territory, because it makes me happy to be here. So feel free, send me an email with what your application is, or if you need just a set of eyes just to read it, 
I'm super happy to do that because that's cool. Um, goodbye to everybody watching from home. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of random filming at the Department of Trade, Business and Innovation. Um, thank you all very much. Please feel free to get in contact, but otherwise, good luck with your applications. Cheers. Yay.